but these distributions, the population distribution and the, and the sampling distributions are related by the central limit theorem, which relates, um, relates the population distribution and the sampling distribution. There are three components to it. Um, the first is that the mean of those two distributions are identical. Identical. You want to guess, so why do I say identical and not just close? Because in sampling, there's like random variation, right? If you take another sample, the mean is going to be a little bit different. So why do I say they're identical, really identical? Yeah. So you assume your sample is representative of the population? Yeah, you assume your sample is representative of the population. So under that assumption, why can I say that they're identical? Have the same mean. Uh, but that's circular. So why is the mean the same? Identically the same, not just close. It's the law of large numbers. So the, the sampling distribution is built from a very large number of, of samples. So um, any one sample will have a distribution or will have a mean something sort of close to the population mean, but it'll differ from sample to sample. But as we calculate the mean of a bunch of samples, the more samples we take, the closer it will get to the population mean. And as we get to an infinite number of samples, they will be identical. And that is the, the, pop, the sampling distribution um, is, is calculated under under an asymptotic approach to an infinite number of samples. All right, it's not an infinite number of individuals in each sample. It might be 100 individuals in each sample, but it's an infinite number of samples. The second part of the central limit theorem um, is that the standard deviation of the population and of the sampling distribution are related by this equation. And I call the standard deviation of the sampling distribution the standard error. So it's still a standard deviation, but it has a special name. It's the standard error. And we only use that for describing a sampling distribution. Um, this is something I have seen endless confusion over in public health is like, should you report standard error or standard deviation? What's the difference? A lot of, we, a lot of people say, well, I report the standard error because it's smaller. Well, they're different things. They're, they're describing two completely different things. The standard deviation is telling you about the variability of individuals in the population. And even if you calculate it from your sample, it's still approximating the standard deviation in the population. The standard error, what is that approximating? Yep. Is that the standard deviation from the sampling distribution? Yeah, it's the standard deviation from the sampling distribution. So it's the variability of the sample means. It tells you how much you expect those means to vary as you take repeated samples. So it's related to your uncertainty in the mean of the sample. Um, and it's related just by dividing by the square root of your sample size. That's it. And the third part, maybe the most surprising, is that um, for large n, so for large enough samples, the shape of your sampling distribution of the means becomes normal, and it doesn't matter what the population distribution is. So if your population distribution is uniform, let's say we're talking about, I don't know, about uh, uh, ages in an elementary school where we have equal numbers of students in each grade. So the distribution of ages is uniform between six years old and 12 years old. If you take samples, calculate the mean of those samples, 
And as the size of those samples get larger, it looks more and more normal, even though we had a uniform distribution to begin with. And in fact, for a large enough sample, it makes no difference what the distribution of what we're observing for the records is in the population. It can be skewed, it can be bimodal, it can be anything. It doesn't matter. The sampling distribution is normal with the same mean as the population and a standard deviation is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. So just summarizing that for a random sample of size of size n, the sampling distribution of the mean will have the following distribution. It'll have the same mean as the population. It'll have a standard deviation, which is the standard error of the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And for a large, um, for a large enough sample size, it'll be normally distributed. So this standard error by dividing by the square root of n reflects the fact that the larger your sample size, the less variability there is in these means. So for um, for a sample size of just n equals 1, the standard deviation is the same as the population. The larger n is, the less variable those samples are. So is, is you take a very large sample size, you're going to see almost no variation in whatever it is you're observing if you're taking random samples. And what do I mean by a large sample? Well, it, it, there's no real cutoff, but sort of as a, a rule of thumb, we consider if you have a sample of n at least 30, the central limit theorem holds pretty well. Um, and, and especially if, um, if, if your population distribution looks, looks anything at all like normal or uniform, um, then, then your sampling distribution will be very normal by the time you're at n equals at n equals 30. Only for some very extremely skewed distributions would you see any variation beyond n equals 30. <clears throat> so I'm going to be covering side by side where, uh, with this and a few other classes. We'll talk about uh, about continuous data in which we're going to use the, the um, we're going to use the standard deviation and the standard error to uh, to do tests with to, for inference and alongside each of them I'm also going to talk about uh, proportions because the um, the sampling distribution of a proportion can also be approximated using the central limit theorem um, with this slightly different calculation of the standard error. So the things that we will use are instead of the mean, it will be the proportion. So if we're talking about a, uh, a binary variable, say the, um, the fraction of um, the fraction of cases, uh, at, so we have a case control type of study, not a case control type of study, but where we are observing a sample and, and reporting whether they get the flu or not. Then the, the p hat here is the proportion that, that have uh, the flu. If it is 10%, then this is um, in our sample 0.1 times 0.9 divided by the sample size. And that gives us our standard error on this proportion. So it tells us if we were to take additional samples of that same sample size, how much that proportion would vary on repeated sampling. <clears throat> we can use this central limit theorem. It's very practical uh, for inference. And for starters, 
So we've learned about the, the standard normal distribution. Um, we know from the central limit theorem that if, if n is sufficiently large, regardless of the population distribution, then our sample means minus the population distribution divided by the standard error is going to be z distributed. So it'll be standard error, standard uh, normal, zero mean, because we know that the sampling mean and the population mean are identical, and unit standard deviation, because we're dividing by the standard error. So for large enough, um, for large enough sample size, this, uh, this entity will have a standard normal distribution, and that allows us to calculate probabilities of observing a sample mean that we observed under random sampling. And we can use that to, to test hypotheses about what the population mean mu is. And you will get plenty of, of uh, practice to get used to this, but that is the basic idea. You're going to have a hypothesis about mu. You're going to have a, um, an observation of the sample mean. And from that, you're going to calculate the 